All right, Taylor Petcher asks, am I the only one that felt Civil War trailer two and the Batman vs. Superman trailer two were almost exactly the same in terms of structure? Uh, mm. I don't know. Are you, are you, is he talking about the Doomsday one yeah. versus He's the, the this trailer one? two is Doomsday one? I, I I don't know. I'd have to rewatch them. I do. I will say the Civil War, the last Civil War trailer and the last Batman v Superman trailer. I have like up. I love both of them. I think yeah. they're both like equally great. If you're talking about the last trailer that just came out for Batman v Superman, the one you're talking yeah. about with Batman up top, then yeah, I agree with that tone because it seemed consistent. If you're talking about the Doomsday one, yeah. then I disagree entirely. But um, but yeah, I just it just depends on which trailer you're talking about. I think maybe when he added that word structurally at the end, uh, they're all very similar. Going through, big reveal, fight, done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so I think yes, to answer his question simply, yeah, it's structurally, they're they were very very similar yeah all right what's next all right jonathan peck asks what actor and director combination that has only worked together once would you like to see make another movie together Oof, that might be once. hard yeah. that one's I, need, tough. I need research yeah. yeah oh man ask us next week as if it's the first time you've asked us well, all right jonathan <laughs> I'm, I'm like crap yeah. i was like coogler and michael b uh, like, like, like martin like, scorsese and De Niro. Oh, uh, right. no. <laughs> uh yeah that one's tough who, 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 who directed Parker? Charlie Theron and Eon Flux? I want that. No, you do again. not want that. Again. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a good thing that they haven't worked together. <laughs> All right. Brogy asks, will Beetlejuice 2 ever happen and do you want it to? Well, funny you ask. Yeah. There's been reports going out uh, today. That we, we don't know if it's... Uh, there's a, so Apparently there was something that said that Tim Burton confirmed that both... Uh, John, not Johnny Depp. Michael Keaton, Johnny Depp for everything he's in. Michael, Edward Scissorhands my, yeah. and Beetlejuice two are combined shared together. universe. Edward Michael Beetlejuice. Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder are going to return. Beetlejuice is what, is what they said <laughs> that Tim Burton confirmed, and that Warner Brothers was going to fast track it and it was going through. But then there was another report saying that that was not true. Yeah. So we don't know. We just know that they've been talking about doing Beetlejuice two for like two years ago. It said like this is going to happen. Um, so I think they need to capitalize on it soon because Michael Keaton right now is pretty hot. Yeah. You know, so I think you get him now. And also, does this fall under, we talked about this the other day, about the comedy sequels, like waiting so, so long and then having, do you think like the underperformance of something like a Zoolander 2 or kind of the mild Dumb reaction Dumb to Dumb and Dumber 2 vacation, mm -hmm. it, do you think that's going to affect Beetlejuice 2? No, because I think Beetlejuice 2, even though it has comedic elements, still has that kind of supernatural thing to it as well. It's very, it's very funny, as, but it's not it's not just straight up comedy. Um, I, I could see where there'd be some reservations, but you're also getting back, you, you know, with Tim Burton, who's a bit different than and, and Beetlejuice is a little bit more beloved, I think, than than even than Zoolander. I know, Josh. I'm sorry. No, but, no, no, no. I I'm I'm watching you kind of like backpedal a little bit, like you're trying to vouch for it. For Zoolander? No, for, for Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Like you're 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 finding ways to vouch for it, which kind of goes back towards Dennis things that that I don't want to see a Beetlejuice too. He's such a beloved character. It's been twenty plus years since we've seen Beetlejuice. The comedy sequels aren't working, and I I love the early Beetlejuice. If Michael Keaton comes back and it's not and everybody's gonna walk out of the theater saying the same exact thing, wasn't as good as the first. It's pretty good, but it wasn't as good as the first. Why do that to, to Beetlejuice? Yeah. I, I don't know, just something about it. I I wanna see Beetlejuice come back. I want to see Michael nice Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Michael Keaton in another like juicy comedy role like Beetlejuice. You know, Edward Beetlehands. Come on, guys. It's Edward Beetlehands. <laughs> Edward Beetlehands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you have another one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, because get that's it. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> I got another one. Mulder on Mushrooms asks, do you nice. think fans measure box office num or dollars as a measure of success too much instead of a film's own merits? Uh, sometimes when people want to defend a movie, they point to, like, uh, everyone knows I, I, I hated uh, Transformers Age of Extinction or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's fine if you like it or not. But I, when a fan comes up to you and goes, but it made so much money. And it's like, that's great. It made a lot of money. Right. A lot of people enjoyed it. That's totally fine. But that yeah. nothing about the box office success tells me if it's a good movie or not. Mm -hmm. I think fans actually, for the majority, are the ones who are saying what you just said in, in response. Because I've seen comments to where someone's like, well, it made a lot of money. Yeah. And then fan, fans jump in before we do. And yeah. it's like, that doesn't mean yeah. shit. It was terrible. Yeah. Like, fans will call. Like, I've seen, I can't remember what it was. Where we, I, I had something against... 
Well, I do have something against Michael Bay uh, as a, as a director. He's, he's <laughs> awful. Um, Whoa. But He's not Whoa. good. He's not good. Uh, no, that's not fair. That's not fair. I'm going to backtrack that, and I'll say that for as far as story goes and as far as characters go, he blows things up and makes things look cool. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no. Um, but what I, will, what I will say, though, is that I can say something about his movies, and someone goes, well, wait a minute. He, he, he's, he's made this movie, and that made that m- amount of money. That, and that just means that he's a successful director. It yeah. doesn't make, mean he makes good movies. Yeah, Michael Bay is an overpaid baseball player. Like, Mark Teixeira can go one for four all season and still make $28 million a year. doesn't mean he's a great baseball player. I think some of the greatest movies ever made did terrible at the box office. Goodfellas bombed at the box office. Uh, Shawshank Redemption bombed at the box office. These are the ones that we watch nonstop over right. and over again. Has nothing to do with box office. Now, some of the great, some other great movies have done really well at the box office, but few and far between. Yeah. Um, I just like to address one thing here. So there's a, someone in the mm-hmm. chat room. Milton Weber said, "I love Harloff to explain himself whenever he says an actor phones it in." God, that phrase is stupid. I don't. Well, no, no, it's not. No, it's not it's stupid not. at all, actually. Because, but I, I appreciate the nice words. Um, <laughs> what I will tell you is that when, it, like, someone like uh, Julianne Moore, yeah. who is on point with her performances, normally, then you watch something like Seventh Son. Yeah. Phoning it in means that you're there. You're the performance is collecting you're not, a paycheck. You're collecting a paycheck, and you're not as tuned in as you normally are. You're there. You're kind of reading the lines. You know who has been phoning in in lately? De Bruce Willis. Uh, oh, uh, De Niro's Willis. been back on track, I think, with Silver Linings Playbook yeah. and other stuff, too. But Bruce Willis, when you see him in movies, when he just is Bruce Willis and he's not John McClane or he's not this character, he's just Bruce Willis over and over, it means he's saying, great, give me my check. I'm out of here. He's <laughs> right. not, they're just not. Just use my name, right, right. put it on the poster. I'll show up to the press junkets and give me my money. Right. Yeah. So phoning it in is a phrase that means I'm just here. Great. Yeah, sure. Boom. I'm done. That's yeah. what it means. Thanks for the Talk about words. a flip of things, right? Phoning it in would be a lot of the Expendables movies, and then you thought Stallone was going to come in and phone in Rocky, and he brought the house down. Right. That's the difference. Go look at those two performances, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Or what Christian's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? All right, Gabriel Bailey asks, thoughts on the proposal of an at-home box for $150 that allows viewing new released movies for $50 a day for a two-day rental. This is some new, new news that came out today. So thoughts on a proposal of an at-home box that you pay $150 for that allows viewing new released movies for $50 yeah, okay. that's, so it's, it's just yeah, so basically too, like you don't go to the theaters and you just it's have this box. It's too much. There's so much content out there now yeah. with movies in the theaters, with television shows, with video games, people watching stuff on YouTube. There's so much going on. You're not going to get someone to to pay hundred fifty dollars for a box that I'm assuming can only do this one thing. You know, I have an Xbox one. I can do a bunch of things. I can play video games. I can watch Netflix. I can, you know, watch movies on demand, all, all this stuff. And then paying fifty dollars for just for two days for one movie, yeah. you can go see five movies for ten bucks in a day. <laughs> that, yeah. it, it, I just don't think it's financially viable. Way too much, and it takes away. If you're gonna spend that much, then I'd rather spend the money and just have the theater experience. Well, yeah, get an Uber to come yeah. pick me up, take me to the theater. <laughs> yeah, you know what right. I mean? I mean, on the flip though, think about it like this: people are spending fifty bucks to see a UFC fight and fifty bucks to see a boxing match. Yeah, but that's like an event. You yeah. get all these yeah. people yeah. over. Usually, when you you know, you want to watch a right. movie. Most people, most of your friends aren't going to come over. And, that. and in the case of the UFC or something, even boxing, you get you get a couple matches up top besides that just one. Because if you pick, True. you're paying fifty bucks, and let's say you you you're fifty dollars, you're doing that in the beginning of September. Then you're <laughs> you're going to have some uh, uh, movies that you're just like, ugh, I just pay this money for. Right. At least you get a couple knockouts in the pre fights. And also too, in like events like that, I'm just going back in my own words. It's like you can sit around and eat nachos and like talk to your buddies. Right, right. You watch a movie for fifty bucks. You can't sit around right. and do that. You're like, yeah. shut up! I just paid fifty bucks. Yeah. For this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, think about how bad you would feel. You know, if you see a bad movie at the theater, it's like 12, 13 bucks at least here right. in LA. Imagine if you spent 50 bucks on a movie at home, you're like, Ugh. Like, and you get a punch, what? but still. Yeah. Yeah. You can, the only bonus is you can pause it when you have to go to the bathroom. True. Very true. <laughs> Tobias Kirby asks, should the Russos direct a Bond movie? They seem to have the spy genre nailed. Oh, that's a good good suggestion. I, I'd be I'd be up for it. It looks yeah. like Sam Mendes is probably done with after Spectre's his last one. So I, I, I'd be down for that. I'm I am too, but I think they're gonna be pretty busy for yeah. a long time. But they, they certainly they have my vote. Uh, I'm with you guys one hundred percent. 
Okay, Clark Kent asks, will there be a Collider commentary video on Man of Steel prior to Batman vs. Superman? Uh, we're trying. We're trying. We're actually, you know, let us know in the comments. So we, we have a dilemma here. We get, we, we said we were going to finish uh, the Star Wars original trilogy before Force Awakens. That didn't happen. We just put up the Empire Strikes Back one. Do you guys want us to finish out and do Return of the Jedi first? Or do you want us to do Man of Steel before that and then do return of the Jedi letter let us know in the comment section or in the chat board yeah or even on twitter you know same thing at collider video and and hashtag it commentaries yeah. so that way we know collider we, commentary collider commentaries hashtag collider commentaries and let us know if you want us to watch man of steel first empire strikes back is up by the way so if you haven't watched that please do that but yeah we, we've been talking about man of steel some other ones and yes 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 i've been getting the tweets we're gonna do the room eventually yes. don't worry and, and if you guys could not invite me to that man of steel one that would be awesome uh oh don't get yourself into trouble <laughs> <laughs> aaron asks comments on one direction singer harry styles joining the cast of christopher nolan's world war ii drama dunkirk um i i don't really know much about one direction i <laughs> I don't even You're know. You're not who a this one D about. fan. Yeah. He's over here, he's a One Direction whoa, whoa. fanatic. I don't know who this guy is. So you don't I, know who I, Harry Styles is. This is what I tell people about pop culture. Especially Grandpa, pop culture. go to sleep. <laughs> pop culture music too. Yeah. You could have the entire. I guess it's a group, right? Like three or four of them. They could be sitting here in the studio right now, and I have no clue what they look like. I have oh no gosh. idea. So. I have no opinion on that. I don't they know if they can great act great hair and act. tight pants. Um, <laughs> I got my tight pants. I'll just tell you real quick. Overwhelming response for uh, Man of Steel. Okay. Overwhelming. Like so it looks, uh, looks, looks like we'll probably be doing that before Return of the Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, first of all, Dunkirk is one of the few World War II things we haven't seen done yet. And it's an amazing, amazing part. If you guys are World War II historians or you've, you know anything about World War II, it's one of those battles that, we, that needs to be... Uh, really done cinematically. Uh, if you're going to throw Harry Styles in, I mean, I hope he can act. There's, I've always said this, and I know I'll probably get a lot of hate for this, but it's really easy to go from singing and being a rock star to acting because it's way easier to act than it is to make a very successful pop song, hence why we've never really seen an actor transition from acting to singing sans Eddie Murphy who did mm, party right. all the time. Bruce which Willis. Is That's a classic. Yeah, yeah. Party all the time. Party all the I listened time. to that in my car the other day, by the way. It was great. It's a great highway song. Yeah, it's fantastic. Don't judge me. I don't care. <laughs> so, yeah, throw Harry Styles in. He's British and, and the, it's, you know, it's a British battle, so I don't see a problem in it. It's One Direction, man. All right. <laughs> if, if, no, if Nolan thinks he can do it, then I'll, yeah. I'll trust Nolan. But, I mean, I, I'm not going to say that a kid can act. I've never seen him act. But uh, you know, all these kids are doing it. You got, it J Jonas just did it in that, that movie that came out in Sundance. Um, the Goat. Uh, yes. Yes, that's great. Yeah. Just great. Great. <laughs> all right, let's do two more. Okay. Kevin asks, what's your favorite movie quote that you actually use in conversation? Oh. Um, I mean, if you're going to go Star Wars, it's uh, stay on target to stay on target that's all the time um stay on target oh uh, you're killing me smalls yeah all, killing me smalls is every good. Time, yeah yeah that's good then i don't know i have to think about it It'd probably something from like mean girls or something <laughs> yes like that. <laughs> that, that movie has so many quotes really quotable <laughs> uh for some reason i always like whisper into weird people's ears like i wish the sisters never got the best of andy dufresne <laughs> and like, oh, nobody shit. really gets <laughs> yeah. it like, what are you talking about people at the supermarket yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. i wish i could yeah. tell you the sisters never got they're like what, what, are, what are you talking about yeah and the, the, the classic come on come on, come on. <laughs> uh, Natasha do you have any uh, movie quotes that you, you um, use actually I do and not very often but from Lord of the Rings the first film uh, keep it keep it secret keep it safe nice <laughs> thou shalt not pass so that's, is, yeah. that, is that a Vegas term or <laughs> you shall not pass. By the way, you want to see the best Gandalf impression ever? Dennis had mentioned last night we did the uh, Celebrity Impression dating game for the Return of Schmoes, and Jamie Costa was in the Celebrity Impression dating game and did five different impressions. And it was one of them amazing. was Gandalf. It's great. Go and check that out. It's on the Schmoes channel. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. Last one. Calvin Johnson asks Leo and JJ. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is he on Twitter? Yeah. Leo and JJ would be yeah. a good team up. Who else would y'all like to see team up? Tom Hardy and Ben Affleck, maybe? Yes, Ooh. that is a good one. Or, or I mean, Ben Affleck directing uh, Fastbender would be great, too. I would have Martin Scorsese and Fastbender. I think that would be a good mm -hmm. mix. Uh, I'd love to see like uh, Rachel McAdams and Tina Fey. Because like mm. Rachel McAdams never gets comedy chops. She's funny girl. Mean Girls, she was hysterical. Yeah. 
All right. Hey, guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.